Hi YouTubers, it's Lonnie Clark again. I'm going to finish up chapter one from uh, this book, uh, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution. Chapter one is why, and we're on the last subchapter. Number of additional cases likely to be large. Our federal government, acting upon inadequate information, had specified how much radiation the average citizen may legally receive from atomic energy programs. We have estimated that this legally permitted radiation dosage would ultimately result in the following tolls. 32,000 extra cancer plus leukemia deaths annually for the current population of 200 million. 150 to 1,500,000 extra deaths from genetically determined diseases annually for a future population of 300 million people. This does not even include the genetically determined stillbirths and infant deaths. Recently, a totally independent evaluation of the genetic hazard of radiation has been published by the Nobel laureate Professor Joshua Letterberg. Joshua Letterberg is a professor of genetics at the Stanford University School of Medicine, Palo Alto, California. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine for his contributions to genetics. His estimate is that the Atomic Energy Commission standards of permissible exposure would increase the natural rate of genetic mutation about 10 percent. Over a period of generations, the health cost of these additional mutations would be about $10 billion a year. Professor Letterberg stated further that uncertainties of the precise magnitude of the effect could mean that an annual health cost of $1 billion to $100 billion a year. This latter figure is in the neighborhood of the entire federal budget. Professor Letterberg's estimate of a 10% increase in mutations from the AEC permitted radiation dosage to the public is an excellent accord with our own estimate of between 5 and 50% increases in mutations. 50%. An estimate which led us to predict 150,000 to 1,500,000 extra genetically determined deaths annually. The incredulous reader will, of course, ask why we could, as a society, be so foolish as to permit radiation dosages with such ultimate con consequences. John F. Kennedy, in his book, Strategy of Peace, expressed his concern over radiation dosages from the fallout of weapons testing. Dosages approximately 20 times lower than those now legally permitted for atomic energy development. These were his words. While many competent scientists agree that there has been no great harm done to mankind as a whole from the amount of radiation created by the bomb test so far, it is also true that there is no amount of radiation so small that it has no ill effects at all upon anybody. There is actually no such thing as a minimum permissible dose. Perhaps we're talking about only a very small number of individual tragedies. The number of atomic age children with cancer, the new victims of leukemia, the damage to skin tissues here and reproductive systems there. Perhaps these are too small to measure with statistics, but they nonetheless loom very large indeed in human and moral terms. Moreover, there is still much that we do not know, and too often in the past we have minimized these perils and shrugged aside these dangers only to find that the estimates were faulty and the real dangers were worse than we knew. That was President Kennedy. President Kennedy's compassion is matched by the profoundly prophetic features of the last sentence of this quotation. The estimates were indeed faulty and the real dangers are much worse than previously realized. Worse yet, 
we are currently developing several atomic energy programs while permitting a 20 times higher radiation dosage to our population than that which worried President Kennedy. And we've actually increased it even since Fukushima. Way worse. Atomic energy proponents spend a large fraction of their time and energies worrying that the public will be frightened by knowing the true health hazards of radiation. They have, therefore, mounted a public relations campaign of major magnitude to reassure the citizens that atomic energy programs are not delivering the legally permitted radiation dosage yet. But they resist every effort to reduce the legally permitted radiation dosage. It is even more scary to observe their, this resistance than to contemplate the health hazard of the radiation itself. Why do we witness this bizarre spectacle on the part of atomic energy technological proponents? It is the substance of this book to answer this question. Many readers, having seen the magnitude of the health hazards described above, may prefer for now to pass over chapter 2, which describes in simple but quantitative terms how the true hazard of radiation was grossly underestimated until recently. However, if we are not to prepare for any, if we are not to prepare the way for rats, as Bertrand Russell feared, we may, it is hoped, that the reader will sooner or later take the time to read chapter two. The technical details there, the technical details there, will prove more easily understandable to the intelligent layman with an open and curious mind than to the expert who has long ago ceased to learn. The lay public has listened before to the findings arising in the sciences that deal with man. The lay public has understood and it has acted constructively. To be sure, the scientific proof of the germ basis for many diseases was difficult. The public understanding the public understands this scientific discovery today. It must not be forgotten that public understanding and support led to sanitation programs and immunization programs, both of which have contributed immeasurably more to the eradication of germ-caused diseases than all antibiotics combined. The scientific details concerning radiation injury to humans are no more difficult to understand than the germ basis of disease. But radiation injur injury is potentially far more destructive of present and future health than are germs. You can skip chapter two for now, but with no loss of understanding. But for the lessons there are, pardon me, I'm gonna read that again. You can skip chapter two for now with no loss of understanding. But the lessons there of errors in public health aspects of technology are general lessons, important to appreciate, and we believe worthy of your study. Well, we don't have to worry about that because I'm definitely going to read chapter two. But that's the end of chapter one, the big why. So we're going to get some answers. And um, I'm going to read chapter two tomorrow. Bye, you guys. Good idea, fix it, stupid. We're fixing it.